This is a CCEA Mathematics M7 Paper 1. So this is the non-calculator part. And it's from Monday the 13th of June 2022. Let's take a look then at the first question. The sketch below shows a triangular field. Uh, two sides of lengths of 50 metres and 90 metres. The angle between these two sides is 70 degrees. Use a scale of 1 centimetre to 10 metres. Draw this triangular field in the space below. So 1 centimetre is 10 metres. So it's 10 metres. There's going to be a centimetre. So that's going to be 5 centimetres. And that's going to be 9 centimetres. I'm going to draw the 9 one first of all. Just so I know it fits in. And give myself kind of plenty of space here. So I'm going to draw a 9 centimetres. Hopefully you can see it down here. Again, as accurate as you can. So I'm going from here. That's my start. I'm down then. And that's 9 centimetres. Sometimes people use a compass then to kind of measure off the 9 centimetres to get it slightly more accurate. But that's okay. The next thing I need then is a 70 degrees. So again, as accurately as I can, I line up my protractor. And I'm measuring here, obviously, the inside one, so it's zero all the way up then. And that's my 70 right on there. So I'm going to do a, a slight, just kind of working line. I'm going to do this one nice and light. And then I can measure the five then after that. So there's the line I vaguely want. If I measure it up, so this needs to be five centimeters long. Again, as accurately as you can, they'll give you a millimeter or two either way whenever they're marking it. So that looks like my point there. And join up there just to finish. And that then should be my triangle there. On the question two uh, below is a menu from Dilly's Diner. Uh, a two course lunch is made up of one starter and one main course. At least blah, 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 blah. work out the number of two course lunches that can be ordered from this menu. So you could have soup and place, soup and beef, soup and chicken, soup and quiche. That's four. Then another four here. And then another four here. So that's going to be 12. Number three, uh, translate triangle A, seven right and four down, label your answer B. So we pick a particular point here and go seven right and four down. Um, and so we don't do things, so let's just see. So I'm gonna pick this point here. So let's go across seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then four down, one, two, three, four. Now I could do exactly the same with the other two corners. Um, of the triangle or I could just kind of work out how it goes so if we go like that and then across like that and measure like that label the answer B describe the translation which maps B to A well, that was just the same thing only really backwards. So instead of seven right and four down, it's going to be seven left and four up. If you wanted, that would be minus seven, four. Some people write it as a wee vector like that. Reflect the triangle A in the line X equals one. The line X equals one is the one then where all the X coordinates are one. And so it's going to be this line here. Some people get a wee bit confused because the y-axis is a vertical line. I think an x line can't be that. But that's my line then. x equals 1. I'm reflecting triangle A then on that. So that's 2 across. So I need to go 2 the other way. That's 1, 2, 3. So you see 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. Oh, that's that one there. So reflect triangle A in the line X equal to question four. Estimate. 
this and show your method. So we round everything to one significant figure. So 395 to one significant figure is 400. This to one significant figure is 10. And that's divided then by 50. Uh, that gives me 4,000. Divided by 50. If you want, you can kind of cancel that down. So it's the same as 400 divided by 5. And that then would give me 80. Question five, Andrew cycles at a steady speed from his home to school for a meeting. He leaves home at 9.15 and arrives at school at 9.45. The distance from his home to school is five kilometers. He spends 20 minutes at school before returning home again. He arrives home at 10.25. And the grid below draw a distance time graph for Andrew's complete journey. So he leaves home at 9.15. So that's gonna be here, because 9.10, 9.20. And then he goes to school he arrives at school at 9.45, so there's 9.45 and it's five kilometers away. So we would have that. Maybe too far there. That's okay. He spends 20 minutes at school. So that's 9.45, that's 9.55, that's 10.05, because each of those wee things in are five minutes, so we need to go across four. And then he returns home, it says at 10.25. So 10.25 then is going to be here. And so that then is going to be my, um, uh, my distance time graph. Work out Andrew's average speed for his journey home. He travels five kilometers home and it takes him 20 minutes. So if he does five kilometers in 20 minutes, now there's different ways of doing this. You could have that as a third of an hour. Five divided by a third would give you 20. I'm just gonna multiply it up. 20 minutes, he would do five kilometers. So he would do 15 kilometers in one hour. Hope you can see how I worked that out. So his average speed then must be 15 kilometers per hour. Is this Andrew's fastest average speed during this journey? Explain why. Um, it is, so it's because of the steepness of the graph here. This is more steep than this. And the fact that it's steeper means he's going quicker. He's covering a greater distance in a shorter time. So the answer then is yes, because that part of the graph is steeper. Uh, question six, Beechgrove High School is 1,200 people in total. 45% of the pupils are girls. Work out the number of girls in the school. So we have 1,200. 10% would be 120. 40% would be 480. 5% would be 60. So we add those two and we're gonna get 540. There are 240 pupils in year 12. What percentage of the pupils in the school are in year 12? So that cancels down then to 24 over 120. And that's a fifth. So you times that by 100 if you want, or maybe people just kind of know that the answer to that then is gonna be 20%. Yeah. Um, students in a class how, or ask how many text messages they each sent in a particular week. Student was taken at random from the class. What is the problem that this student sent more than 59 text messages? So we need to add these up. So with one plus three, that's gonna be four. That's gonna be 17. So I think then there are 28 then in total. Sent more than 59. So more than 59 would be the eight and the three. So eight and three then is 11. So my answer would be 11 over 28. A student was taken at random from those who sent less than 60. Should be fewer. So that's these ones here. What's the problem with this student sent 40 to 59? 
So out of these people, 13, 40, so out of 17, what's the probability they sent 40 to 59? It's going to be 13. So the answer then is 13 over 17. Um, what is the main difference between a binary number system and a decimal number system? That's quite an awkward wee question. Um, I suppose binary uses only two symbols, would be one way of saying it. Uh, so it is either a zero or one, or if you want, binary is base two decimal is base 10. Write the binary number 111111 as a decimal number. So the way we set this up is we do our different powers 2 to the power 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And that lines up with our 111111. I have too many actually there, don't I? Um, so I have that. So 32 plus 16 um, plus 8 gives me 56. That gives me 60, 62, 63. You also might know if it's, if it's all of these, um, it's going to be one fewer than that. Write the decimal number 87 as a binary number. So again, we need to do the same thing. That's set up 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. We need one of those. That would make it too big. So 64 and 16 gives me 80. And I want 7, so 0. And then one, one, one. So one o oh, one o, oh, one one one. Question nine: Simplify w cubed times w squared. That's w to the power of five. Y to the six over y to the two. We subtract the powers here. So that's y to the power of four. Work out the nth term of this sequence. So what I tell people to do is I number them one, two, three, four, and five. I then find the gap. So the gap here is seven. That means it has to be seven n, and then plus or minus something. You put the number one into here, seven. It gives me seven, and that's the right answer. So seven n is what we're looking for. Five to the power of minus two. That gives me is the minus means it's one over, and the two is what it always means. It's five squared. So my answer then is one over. 25. 1 to the power of 5 is 1. 6 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. And 1 plus 1, I hope you know, is 2. The following table gives some values for the quadratic equation y equals x squared minus 3x plus 1. On the grid below, draw the graph for values of x between minus 2 and 4. So we have minus 2, 11. So that's one of our points there. My next point is minus 1, 5. My next point is 0, 1. My next point is 1, minus 1. Can't quite see that. My next point is 2, minus 1. My next point is 3, 1. And my next point is 4, 5. So we need to then kind of join those up and kind of sketch it. Remember you can turn your page around. It doesn't always need to face the same way. Just to, get, to kind of get the nicest curve you can here. So we're going to draw a line like that. And that's an okay effort. It could be a bit straighter, I suppose. Or not straighter, but smoother in some places. But that's generally what we have there. Use your graph to estimate the values of x for which y equals 3. So y equals 3 is here. So it's going to be along this line here. So we're looking for our values of x here and here. So to me that's 3.6 and then that's minus, not 0.6. So those then are my two values. Minus, not 0.6 and 
A tent in the shape of a cone has a perpendicular height of 7 and a volume of 220. Using 22 over 7 for pi, work out the base radius of this tent. Write your answer in third form. So my formula is volume is a third pi r squared h. I said a third, I wrote a half, is a third. So it's a third times 22 over 7 times 7 times r squared and we have to work out the r and we also know then that that gives us 220 so I'm then going to write 220 as a third times 22 over 7 times 7 times r squared that 7 is going to cancel out with that so we're going to get 220 is 22 over 3 r squared. Things get a wee bit complicated here. We divide both sides by 22 and times by 3. You can do this whatever way you want really, but they both obviously divide by 22. So that would give me then 10 equals a third r squared. You mightn't quite get that, but that's the way it works. And then r squared is 30. So r then is going to be the square root of 30. The answer then is root 30. There's no kind of big square number or anything to kind of cancel that third down, but that's generally what we have. Um, okay, Toby walks his dog in the field A, B, C, D, so that he is always more than 40 metres from A, and he is nearer to A than B. Um, and he's nearer to D A than he is to D C. Goodness, shade the area where Toby walks his dog. Okay, so more than 40 meters from A, and my scale here is one centimeter to 10 meters. So I'm just gonna set up my compass here. It's easier said than done. All right, I'll be right with you. Because we need to set, if he's more than 40 meters from A, so 40 meters from A is gonna be round about here, and so he should be further away than that. So I've got my compass, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set it up now at four centimeters. So I put it there. And that then is gonna be my four centimeter mark there. I hope you can see that. So I set that up at A. that so if he's more than 40 meters from a it means he isn't inside this so we don't want that bit nearer to a than he is to b well that's like a perpendicular bisector thing i mean they might let you away with measuring it with a ruler and then kind of splitting it in two but i'm going to do it properly and do my perpendicular bisector so we need to go over halfway So I do a shape that looks like that. And then I'm actually gonna flip this upside down. So it's easier to use my compass that way. Those. Back down again for us. And nearer to A than B. It's gonna run down then this line here. Hopefully that's vaguely accurate. So it's nearer to A than B, so it's in this bit here, but not in this bit here, and then nearer to DA than to DC. It's so nearer to DA than to DC, so I need to bisect this angle here. It's actually at 45 degrees, so I'm gonna do that there, and that there. I then go to each of those points. Do a line like that. And do a line like that. So where they cross each other is where the thing that bisects them. There's a lot going on there. Uh, so it's nearer to DA than it is to DC. So it's going to be not in this region here. So the region that we do want here is going to be this one here. 
that's kind of what we're left with. Get rid of everything else, and that's my region there. That's the bit then they're looking for. Uh, question 13. Find the value of m over n given your answer then a standard form. So we need to divide these two things. So we're going to do 4.5 times 10 to the power 7 divided by 5 times 10 to the power minus 3. I kind of split those things up. We want to do 4.5 divided by 5. Multiplied by 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the minus 3. It's quite a tough one this. 4.5 divided by 5. 45 divided by 5 is of course 9. So 4.5 divided by 5 is going to be 0 0.9. 10 to the 7 divided by 10 to the minus 3. So that's 7 minus minus 3. So that's 10. We're close, but we're not in standard form. We need to write this number then in standard form. I'm going to get my eraser and cover it over. How do you write 0 0.9 in standard form? It's of course 9 times 10 to the minus 1. And that's times 10 to the 10. Minus 1 plus 10, we add those powers. So my final answer, finally, is 9 times 10 to the power of 9. Uh, finally, make Q the subject of the formula. This one's quite tough because there's Q's in both of them. It is the last question after all. So we need to, first of all, multiply by R minus Q. So we get P upon R minus Q equals Q. P R minus PQ equals Q. Then I'm going to take the PQ then over to both sides. Maybe she's done this all the way. So I'm adding, adding PQ to both sides. PR equals Q plus PQ. And now I need to factorise that bit out. So PR is Q upon 1 plus P. So the Q is now on its own and I need them to divide. So Q is going to be PR over 1 plus P. Now I've flipped those two around. I hope that makes sense. So my final answer then is PR over 1 plus P.